Welcome to Money Adventures with TK, a podcast for the ordinary young African who is determined to get their personal finances right. Willing to have a better relationship with your money? Well, this podcast is for you. Hello fellow trailblazers, welcome back to episode 7, officially episode 7 of Money Adventures with TK. My name is Tukiso TK Ntebe and I'm a financial wellness coach and speaker. The reason we have this podcast or the reason we do this podcast is to have money conversations that the ordinary young African child can relate with. Stories from young professionals, entrepreneurs, business people, whatever the case may be, that have a compelling story that can help us better relate with our money. So in episode seven, what really inspired this conversation is a topic that we titled financial resources versus mental resources. And my guest in studio this afternoon came up with a very thought-provoking quote where she says, If you are broke mentally, you will definitely be broke in your wallet. And this is a conversation I thought, hmm, in the line of work, I always encourage people to monetize their talents, increase their sources of income. You're probably juggling an eight to five and a side hustle, whatever the case may be. But the one conversation we hardly ever talk about is what mental resources are required to be okay in pursuit of securing the bag. So in studio today, I chat to a dear friend of mine and a counseling psychologist who's also very passionate about mental wellness, Mpeng Tamai. Mpeng, good afternoon and welcome to Money Adventures with TK. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for finally having me. Uh, It's been a long time coming. But I guess we time was made this time. <laughs> this adult in business. Hey, it's a lot. <laughs> it's too much. Oh, it's, this adult in business. It's so without enough. wasting any more time, who is paying Tamai? Hmm. So like I am paying Tamai. I will start by saying I am Team Jesus. That's <laughs> that's what I'm known for. That's what I would want to be known for. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a Musotu, half Sotu, half Uganda. My dad is from Uganda. Um, and I'm a counseling psychologist by profession and yeah I'm just I'm passionate about um, mental health especially in developing countries where I feel there's still so much more that we need to do Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. talking about developing countries Mm -hmm. Lesotho as an example Mm -hmm. there's this mystery around what therapy is Mm -hmm. in your words what is therapy and what do people need to know about mm-hmm. therapy? Mm-hmm. So therapy, we're not even, I mean, you said this is a chilled space, right? Yeah. So we, it's not even textbook definitions particularly. So I think people are, are quite, aware, right now, you just, therapy is just going to a, a person who's neutral, who's trained um, to probably help you maneuver a lot of things and process certain things that you would not otherwise be able to process by yourself or with the people who already know you. Mm -hmm. Um, I think what people need to know about therapy is that they need to go to qualified um, psychologists. I think what people need to know about therapy is that it's not as spooky as people make it out to be. That once you do decide to have that session, um, it actually tends you, I always say, you feel like a quality human being. You know, there's quality to what you say, what you think, what you process, because unlike other people who live on a particular surface, you actually go deeper to ask things or questions that other people don't. Mm. And I, I personally like can relate because mm-hmm. I'm also on that journey. Mm-hmm. And for me, when you say that, it's not as scary as, mm-hmm. you know, you're not going to die. <laughs> you really are sitting down and working through mm-hmm. some of the issues or challenges that you're going through. So mm-hmm. if you are a young person out there mm-hmm. and you feel like you need help, I would highly recommend that seek help, you know. Mm-hmm. So the conversation this afternoon is around financial resources mm-hmm. versus mental resources. resources. What what inspired this topic? And I know I I know, know we attempted to have the conversation many a time, mm-hmm. and then you said this is what we're gonna title the conversation: mm-hmm. financial resources versus mm-hmm. mental resources. Mm-hmm. So when we were having this conversation, because it was really birthed from what we were talking about, I was thinking that a lot of times what we are 
support is money, what you should do to get money. You know, we have a lot of people that are working really hard, that have everything that they need, cars and everything. But what they were not taught is the mental and emotional resources that are needed for you to handle these financial resources. And I was thinking probably that's a conversation we should have, especially for people in our generation. Yes, like you're saying, we're securing the bag. You have what you have, but do you have the mental resources to deal with the financial resources that you have? Are you aware of certain things you can't do that you can, where you can't help, where you can help? Mm -hmm. So for me, that's that's what really um, that's what really was happening in my mind. That's what I was processing. Mm -hmm. And what would you say? Uh, delving a bit deeper in mm-hmm. um, mental resources. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe take us through some of these mental resources. I know the one conversation that came up is relationships with loved ones. Mm-hmm. You know, I could be paying for certain things mm-hmm. without being aware that I may be buying this mm-hmm. person's this person's love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so mental resources, right? Like how I would how I would list them if I were. And where it comes from, where it comes from. Mm Because I think think that's also very important. Okay, so just so that people don't go to Google and look (laughs) for it, and then they're like, however. um, I was telling TK that I was having a conversation with my dad, Mm -hmm. and we, I would usually ask questions. I don't understand why people don't understand this. You know, when you're just struggling to reconcile the world and just their school of thought necessarily. Mm -hmm. And dad will always say, but you have the mental resources that they might not have to understand a particular thing. So for me, mental resources is the capacity that you have emotionally and Mm. mentally to understand your environment, to deal with challenges, to deal with life, you know, to deal with things such as finances, boundaries and relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I think that's, that's what mental, that's how we can simply put what mental resources are. And you bring me to an interesting question, Mm -hmm. boundaries, Mm -hmm. using the word boundaries. Mm -hmm. Let's, I've had a couple of conversations with young people Mm -hmm. about around black tax and Mm -hmm. what it entails, you know. So when we talk about black tax and boundaries, Mm -hmm. so for me, my take or stance on black tax, which I don't like the word black tax Mm -hmm. personally, I believe that black tax in this context is us saying as a culture, as a people, Mm -hmm. we have the responsibility not obligation, Mm -hmm. responsibility to take care of our own Mm -hmm. families or whatever the case may be. But for me, it becomes a bit dangerous when we cannot define those boundaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Firstly, let let me start by saying, I think sometimes we are helped by reframing things. Mm -hmm. You know, if you reword something, it's a bit, it's less heavier. For me, uh, being someone that is, who is from a black, um, who's from a black family with, legacies of trauma and everything um i've decided to call it gratitude Mm -hmm. um and for me that's what helps me uh and i think it's to call it gratitude we're not even trying to go away from the fact that we call it text because people feel like something is being taken away that is not necessarily being taken away in other instances um and i come to your thought about how um it's it's not an obligation i think some people feel it is you know, mm. and that's how it's treated in the families, mm. you know, and that's why sometimes it's just like, what do I need to do to get out of this? Mm. But talking about boundaries in that, I was saying that when we were talking that we must be aware that these are boundaries that are not, that you can't set overnight, mm. you know, we're dealing with systems or dysfunctions within our families that have been functional all our lives. Now you go to therapy, you're about 20, 30 years, you want to change the entire game. And it could be very difficult, you know. You're talking to a generation that is not even within where we think, you know. Um, So I think those boundaries are important. I think those boundaries are really important. I don't think they're easy to put in place, but I think it's something that can be done uh, Mm. to put things into place and say, ish. This is what I can reasonably give you at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what I will be willing to give, you know, so that where you are giving, there's also effort as Mm -hmm. well in in a way that helps you. Mm -hmm. Um, My dad says this, he says a black or an African man, I don't know where he got it, but he says that's why like a black man never, it can never be rich Ali when he's in his place of origin Mm -hmm. because... 
you know, you're too close with and people can always come and ask. But if you go far, there are higher chances that you would be able to to be rich in whatever. I mean, it's it's what people think. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think we need to put those boundaries in place. I think you have to be okay. I was telling you, you have to be okay with not being liked. Um, I've been called stingy, I think. Because <laughs> when people ask for money, I tell them, you must tell me in time. I have a budget. Yeah. I have monthly things. So I'll tell you, this month I won't be able to help you. I'll help you next month. Or oh, that's a bit steep. I don't think I'll be able to help. Mm. So we need to be okay with um, the repercussions that come with with those boundaries. So in a case where now I've been bold enough to mm-hmm. say... I'm going to put in these boundaries, Mm -hmm. you know, and you said rightfully so that it takes time to build Mm -hmm. and to be comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. In the event where I've set the boundary and I'm having an anxiety attack, I should have given and paying the 300 (laughs) rand or am I a mean person? What if she dies? You know, or I could have given my dad that extra 500 Mm -hmm. rand, but I needed Mm -hmm. that 500 rand to take care of something that I've Mm -hmm. been chasing. How does, how do I, in a simple way, without getting too technical or too professional, if you Mm -hmm. will, what are some of the things I can do, you know? I know for I know for example, I always say to myself when it's a rough month, which I also have a rough month, you know, I'm like, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. Mm-hmm. Initially, I won't believe it, mm-hmm. but I'll say it enough times, and then I'll be like, actually, I am gonna be fine. okay, you know. Yeah. yeah. So what? Uh, maybe one or two that whoever is listening to the podcast can say. This is what I'm I'm going through what you guys are talking about. What can I these are some of the things I can put in place just to reaffirm and be comfortable with those boundaries that I'm putting in place. Firstly, it's not an easy question. You said in a simple way. It's not a simple way. There's no simple way to answer it. I'll try and just give a few pointers here and there. But it's not an easy thing because there are many reasons why people feel like that. Mm. That is why we advocate for therapy. You won't know until you get into it. You'll probably think, oh, I'm such a nice person. When I haven't helped people, I don't sleep. Can't it's your own issues. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's very deep. No, on a that's serious deep. note, that's yeah. what we deal with in that's therapy. Yeah. You realize that you have experienced, maybe let's say trauma. This is like real things. You have experienced trauma and when you were in that particular trauma, um, you felt abandoned, neglected. Mm. There's a possibility that you project those same feelings every time you see someone that seems to be in need, you know? Um, And these are things that you realize when you're in therapy. You're like, oh, I'm not really such a nice person, to be honest. I'm just wounded and I need to know that. And I think once you know that, if you can go for therapy, if there is a means to go to therapy, that will help you. Um, In a case where it's not even anything deep, I think you can, I always talk about like what you're saying, talk yourself up. and remind yourself that you're doing enough. Because there are a lot of people who are doing a lot in their families and their families still make them feel like they're not doing enough. So you must be the one to look yourself in the mirror and say, Ping, that's why you're doing enough. Mm. You know, you've done this. And remind yourself that. Because once you believe it, it's much better for you to live it out. Two, I think if you have one person that you can talk to, that you trust, you know, someone that you know is like your soundboard. You can always say, this is how I'm feeling. Uh, you know the structure of my family. Or you know the structure of my relationship. It doesn't even have to be in a family. How do I do this? And I think for me, that has helped to talk to someone. And they'll be like, they will probably affirm what I've already told myself that I can need this is enough mm. this is what you can do and I think that's something that's within reach that someone can use um, to sort of do that but to ask yourself those are questions especially this generation we don't want to ask those questions why do I do certain things mm. um, why do I always have to pay for the bill you know you know for girls for example I don't want to say girls shouldn't pay for bills but sometimes we why am I paying is it control you know, is it why do I always have to be paying for things? Is it generosity or is it control? Mm. Yes. And that's a conversation you can only discover mm-hmm. once you actually have it with yourself. Yes. Mm. And ask yourself uncomfortable conversa- questions. And, and I think for me, I'm going to use the words because I love the, the, the new terminology now. Mm-hmm. Possibly I could be in a dysfunctional relationship with my I've been in a dysfunctional relationship with my money mm-hmm. that 
has been somewhat functional. Mm-hmm. But until I actually sit down with myself and be mm-hmm. like, but this has been dysfunctional. Mm-hmm. It's it's time for me to do that, mm-hmm. you know. So for me that's that's the the Even if it's of, functional now, but it's a dysfunction. It, it's in a, a dysfunction way. in mm-hmm. a way. So I think for me we need to be comfortable with having those mm-hmm. honest conversations with ourselves, with our families, with our loved ones mm-hmm. in whatever relationship you are in. You mm-hmm. know? So in the last couple of minutes, mm-hmm. um, this is money adventures and we really are the fun having many conversations need to be fun and engaging mm-hmm. you know so i want to know from paying what is your relationship with money <laughs> at this time i have a flirty relationship with money <laughs> like i see you money you see me let's be together yeah you know but money sees me and chooses me this, yeah this is what i affirm myself i'm just like money sees me chooses money follows me around yeah. money loves me <laughs> Um, I think Kanyimba uses these words a lot of times and yeah, I think at this point it's quite flirty. I, there's just more that I need. Of of money. It. <laughs> of I, it. I just need to see it. But I, like I said, I, my, another com- I don't, it's not my lord. Mm. I use money. Money doesn't use me. Um, I believe it's something that should be used um, to enable a lifestyle or whatever we want to do. But I don't believe that it should it should lord you it can be very dangerous when it does i can cost you relationships um so yeah i i just want more of it to use and not for it to control me mm-hmm. uh, necessarily it's not one of it's not my main motivators but it is a motivator in my life i'm not going to be inside i don't care about money i do but i'm one of the people that believe that if you're in alignment with the will of god for your life money follows you Mm-hmm. Um, if you're in purpose, money should come. It might take a while for some. I don't want to, you know, guess people up here and be like, hey, I've been in purpose <laughs> for such a long time. But, you know, you show up, you believe what you do, and I think it will come uh, with wisdom, with everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then in one line, mm-hmm. closing remarks to whoever's listening to this particular episode, we're talking about financial resources mm-hmm. versus mental resources. In mm-hmm. closing the conversation, what do we leave our listeners with? Hmm. You said I must have one line to someone that speaks for a living. <laughs> uh, one line, or at least one comment, I can put it to one comment, uh, is seek counsel, seek financial advice. Um, that's what has helped me. You don't know everything. Just the fact that you have a salary and you have, it doesn't mean that you know everything about money. Call people that know, pay for services that help you understand more about money and take it from there. I think we underestimate the the insight we can get from um, from seeing a professional about things. You know, we're in a generation where we're opening businesses, we're opening what you know without thorough um, research. And mm-hmm. I use research quote unquote, but talking to people, seeking counsel, and saying this is what I need to do. I believe if you need counseling before you go into marriage, you need counseling before you buy a big property. What are the risk? What am I seeing? Am I spending this well? So yeah, seek counsel. From qualified, yeah, qualified. Yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, fellow trailblazers, you guys have been listening to Money Adventures, episode seven. We are talking financial resources and versus mental resources. I'm chatting to Pen Tamai. She's a counseling psychologist. I will also drop her professional details below. Seek help if you need help. And remember to like this episode, share it with somebody who can benefit from it. Subscribe to the channel and, of course, to my YouTube channel, Escapes with TK, where we talk about money, travel, and lifestyle. But until the next video, take care of yourself, selves. COVID is still very real, so wear your mask, keep your social distance, sanitize as often as you can, wash your hands with running water. Until the next video, love, peace, and money. money. Thank you guys. Cheers. <laughs> You've been listening to Money Adventures with TK. We want to hear from you. Don't be shy to like, comment, and share. Money's an adventure. Let's enjoy the ride. <laughs> <laughs>